Welcome to NHS Forth Valley. Return to Fitness, a physiotherapy led rehabilitation programme. My name is Adele and this is Katrina and we will both be delivering this programme. This programme is aimed at people recovering from MSK conditions and people that would like to generally improve their activity levels alongside their general health and well-being. This series consists of four classes which progressively get harder. We recommend that you start at a level that feels right for you. Remember to pace yourself through each class and take rest periods as needed. You may need to complete this class for a few weeks before you start to feel the benefits. And remember that you complete each class as many times as you wish. We advise that you complete this programme at least once a week. Remember that heart doesn't mean harm. Exercise soreness after class is entirely normal and may last for a day or two, so please don't be put off by that. Um, if you have underlying health conditions, particularly osteoporosis, or if you're pregnant, we'd ask you just check with your GP or your physiotherapist before starting um, these exercise classes. When you come to do your classes, um, if you're going to be doing level one or level two, you will require a chair and a little bit of space. Um, at home. If you're working on level 3 or level 4, which is slightly more difficult, um, these have a mat work section. So you would maybe put a mat on the floor or just ensure you have a little bit of space on your carpet that you can move around safely. Um, there's also the option to add some weights. Um, if you have weights at home, that's wonderful. These can be maybe one or two kilograms in weight. We wouldn't recommend much more than that. Uh, or alternatively, you could use a couple of tins of soup if you have something handy like that. Um, in terms of what you are wearing, something comfortable and loose like we're wearing today and ideally a pair of trainers so you're safe and supported and um, you have a good grip with the floor. The format of our classes will be, um, we'll start with a warm up. Um, which will be led by Adele and Adele will also lead the circuit part of the classes. Now the circuit um, part of the classes you could perhaps run through twice if you wish um, depending on how you're feeling on that particular day. This will be followed by the stretching section, section which is led by myself and we'll do a cool down at the end with the option of some, some relaxation after that. Okay, I think that's the formalities out of the way. Let's begin. This is the warm up section of our video. Let's get moving. So, we're going to start off by marching on the spot, lifting the knees nice and high, giving an arm swing. If you need to support the chair, that's fine, just lightly hold on. Lift the knees nice and high, trying to get warmed up. So, next exercise we're going to go into is our heel dogs, with the bicep curve. So, we're going to stick a heel. And if you need the support of the chair, that's fine. You can maybe hold on. Two, five, four, three, two, one, and back into march again. Just work at your own pace. Those that have been doing this class for a while, try and keep up at my pace. Exercises, two taps with a lateral arm raise. If you need the support of the chair again, that's absolutely fine. Four, three, two, one, and back into the march again. Next 
next one we're going to do is pull taps behind with an arm raise out to the front. And starting on the right leg. Four, three, two, one, and back into a march again. Get my arms swinging, knees nice and high. Next exercise we're going to do is heel flex. So again, if you need to support the chair, hold on. Five, four, three. So you should start to feel nice and warm, getting the heart rate up, then you get started with the next section. So we're going to do some nice shoulder circles, so I'll turn the arm, again if you need to hold on the chest, that's absolutely fine. So warm up for the shoulders, getting a bit of mobility. This is the first exercise, wall press. So we're going to do press ups against the wall for a minute. So keep your feet hip width apart. Hands should be at shoulder height, okay. And you can keep them nice and wide. So we're working the chest. So off we go. So lean them down and then pushing away. So as we come in, we want to pinch the shoulder blades. So we're squeezing the shoulder blades together and then we're pushing away. So we're working the pack muscles and the push way and then the squeeze we're working right the scapula. Go on. These are doing well, keep pushing, keep working hard. Controls, so that's us halfway. Doing really well. back nice and straight, obviously the more body weight you're leaning into this, the harder you're working those arm muscles. Should start to feel the shoulders getting a bit achy, last 10 seconds. Keep working, you're doing well. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. This is the second exercise, wall slides. So starting the feet hip width apart, we're going to lean back against the wall. Okay, timer's on for a minute. And we're going to slide down so our knees should be tracking over our toes. And then push back up, slide back down. Make sure the knees are not falling. You're really wanting to try and push the knees out. Back up, make sure you're not hyperextending, so keeping a wee soft knee as you come back up. Okay, we'll try and hold for a few seconds at the bottom, really working these thigh muscles, you feel them a bit achy. Push back up. Lovely, that's us halfway, keep working. Holding, holding, push back up, lovely. Back down. Holding, holding, keeping those knees dry, dry. Push back up. These are doing really well. Keep going. This is a tough exercise. Last 10. Keep working. Push back up. Last one. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. This is the third exercise. Squat side taps. Okay, so for a minute. We're going to work on this exercise, down into a squat, tap out to the side and straight back up. So we're just working the one leg for 30 seconds and then we're going to be changing the breath. Okay, make sure when you're doing this exercise that you're keeping the opposite knee driven out. Don't let it collapse in. You can have the hands out in front or on the hips for a bit of support. Uh, 
that's us halfway, so change over, down, out to the side, and back up. This should be the legs starting to get a bit achy. Keep working hard, you're doing really well. This is a tough exercise. Last 10 seconds, keep pushing. Last few reps on this side. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. This is the fourth exercise, bodyweight squats. So start in position, feet should be under hips. Okay, and timer's on for a minute. All right, so off we go. So with the arms, you can just do what's comfortable. You can either have them on your hips or cross body. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Okay, so make sure your back is nice and flat and you're squeezing those leg muscles on the way back up. Okay, so side eye angle on. Back should be nice and flat. That's us halfway through. Keep pushing, keep driving through the legs. So you're doing really well, keep working hard. Should be feeling those legs getting a bit achy, muscles getting tired. Keep pushing, last 10 seconds, keep going. Try and get a few more reps. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. This is the fifth exercise, walking lunges. So make sure you have a bit of space for this because we're going to be traveling, okay? So timer's on, off we go, hands to the hips, step forward, push back up, and opposite leg. Okay, so just keep working the length of the room, and then turn and walk, walk back. So making sure that your back leg is running parallel with the floor. And you're keeping the core nice and steady, so no dipping of the upper body. So you're really working on your core stability with this exercise too. You're doing well, keep working. Partly it should be up. We're halfway through the circuit section, so 10 seconds left. Keep pushing, last few reps. Try and get a few more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. For the next three exercises, we are now down onto the floor or onto a mat if you have one. Feel free to pause the video to get yourself ready for the next three circuits. This is exercise number six, dead bugs. So we're down onto the mat or floor for this section, okay? So lying flat down on your back, starting position is both feet up and arms over head at shoulder height. Okay, so off we go for the minute. So we're extending opposite arm, opposite leg, and back to your starting position. So throughout this exercise, you want to ensure that your lower back is not lifting up off the mat. So protecting your back at all times, keeping the core engaged. So this is a much slower, more controlled movement. Alternating leg so we're halfway through keep going doing really well nice and smooth and controlled alternating arm and leg well done 10 seconds left nearly there last couple five four three two well done. Mm -hmm. 
This is exercise number seven, Superman, just the legs. So we're down into a four point kneeling position. Okay, so to get your staff belly, knees should be on the hips. Hands can be slightly in front of the shoulders. And you can turn them out a little bit as well to the side, just so our feels comfortable. Okay, on curved feet. And uh, we're going to extend one leg, linger for a few seconds, and back down. So this exercise is nice and slow and controlled, extending that leg, trying to keep your trunk steady. So there should be minimal movement, keeping the core nice and strong. Your neck should be in a nice neutral position. Okay, so just looking straight ahead. That's us halfway through. Keep alternating from leg to leg. Doing really well. Nice and slow and controlled. Well done. Keep going. Doing really well. Last 10 seconds. Keep working hard. Last few reps. Keep the core nice and steady. Last five. Four, three, two, and one. Lovely. Well done. This is the eighth and final exercise, bridging. So we're lying on our back for this, knees bent. Put your feet together, separate your hands, separate your toes. So that should be in a good starting position where we gap between your knees. So off we go for a minute, timer's on. Squeeze and lift up to the top, hold for a few seconds and lower back down. So nice and slow and controlled with this exercise. Making sure you squeeze your bum up at the top, working those bottom muscles. Really driving your weight down through the heel Trying to keep the core nice and steady and controlled. That's us halfway. These are doing well. Keep working hard. Last exercise. Those legs will be feeling tired. Not long left. Big squeeze. Hold. Hold. Go down. Last 10 seconds. Keep pushing those last few reps. You're doing really well. Last five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. That's our circuit section complete. Feel free to rewind and complete this section again. Otherwise, stay tuned for the mat work section. Hi there, and welcome to our mat work section. So for this section, um, I need a little bit of space on the floor. I'm going to use a folded up towel to support my head. So if you have a cushion or a towel nearby, that would be ideal. This section is going to consist of exercises um, which challenge our stability and our strength and our tummy and our back muscles. And we're also going to do some stretches as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy them. I have a lie down to start off with. So we're going to lie on our back. And if you pop your support underneath your head, so your head's nice and um, comfortable, think about dropping your shoulders down from your ears and you can make the back of your neck nice and long so your chin feels a bit tucked and we'll lay our arms by our sides, knees bent and knees um, and feet hip distance apart. So the first thing we're going to think about in this position is uh, where our back is. We're going to start with a pelvic tilting exercise which is a lovely way to loosen off the bottom part of your spine and just take awareness to exactly where your back is sitting just now. So we're going to make a little triangle with your hands and lay your thumbs onto your belly button. So from here, we're going to think about tipping that little triangle back up towards you. So flatten your back into the floor as you scoop your tailbone underneath. So that little diamond's going to scoop towards you. And then as you press your tailbone down, the little diamond's going to scoop away from you again. Continue to do that movement, rocking your pelvis back and forwards. And hopefully you'll feel as you rock your pelvis backwards, your bottom part of your spine, your lumbar spine, 
we'll press into the floor and as you tip forwards it will arch your way. We're going to do a few more of those as we move towards our neutral position where we kind of just feel we've got ourselves in a comfortable position in the middle of those two extremes of movements. Pop your hands down onto the floor from here. Now we're going to just slide our head block to the side for a moment, taking our head support away, because we're going to continue that pelvic tilt movement into a bridge to attempt to get some more movement in the spine. Now tuck your heels slightly closer in towards your bottom for this, and just rest your arms by your side. We're going to do that same tilting movement we tuck our bottom underneath, flatten your back into the floor. And now we're going to squeeze your bottom muscles as we tip uh, lift your tailbone up off the floor and think about peeling your spine off the floor one bone at a time. So we're aiming to get our spine up so we're in a nice straight line between our knees, our hips and our shoulders. Our head's nice and relaxed. And from here we're going to roll back down again. So let the bones in between your shoulder blades settle into the floor first of all. And we're rolling down one bone at a time until the tailbone finally presses into the mat again. Get back to that comfortable pelvis position. One more time, tipping your pelvis back, squeeze your bottom. And we're peeling the spine up off the floor, one bone at a time, until you're in your bridge position. And then we're gonna roll the spine back down again, settle onto the floor. Pop your head support back in. Now we're gonna think about challenging the muscles across the front of our tummy from here. So I want you to imagine you've got glass of icy cold water on one of your knees and we're going to move the other leg so the leg that's got the glass of water in it that's going to stay really still and it's not going to wobble or move the leg that's free we're going to drift it out to the side so keeping your foot on the floor drift your knee to the side and then draw it back in again now we're going to swap sides take your focus to the other side we're going to drift that leg out to the side So we're thinking here about gently working the muscles in the front of your tummy in order to keep that stabilising leg nice and still as the other leg just drifts in and out. So it's not a difficult movement, but what we're looking at is stability across your tummy and in the stabilising leg. Okay, to make this one a little bit more tricky, we're going to bring one leg up now into a position called tabletop. So we're going to lift up your leg so your knee is above your hip and your foot's about the same height as your knee. If you look down your body, you can't see your toes because they're tucked behind your foot, behind your knee. This time with your whole leg, the whole leg's going to drift out to the side. So again, your toes are staying hidden behind your knees and you're going to drift it back into the middle again and then pop that leg down and switch to the other side. Lift it up into tabletop, keep the toes hidden, drift it out to the side and back to the midline again. So we're looking at keeping the leg that's stable, the leg that's not moving, it's going to stay really nice and still and hopefully you'll feel this across the front of your tummy as the muscles work to keep you nice and steady. We're just going to do three more of these. Keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed. It's a lot to take in. A lot to think about if you keep your head and your shoulders nice and relaxed, that's really helpful. Okay, this is the last one here. Okay, and now we're going to take a stretch and a very similar movement. Sit your arms wide on the floor, backs of the hands resting, and this time we're going to zip our legs together and maybe just tuck your heels in slightly towards your bottom. Allow your knees to roll together around to the side, keeping your shoulder blades resting on the floor. So we're rolling the knees to one side. See if you can keep your shoulder blades on the floor to let your spine stretch. And from here, we're going to roll the knees back in and round to the other side. So just in your own time, and just working to a position that's comfortable for you, let your knees roll. Come back to the centre again. This time we're going to make that stretch a little bit, um, a little bit more intense by turning your head away from your knees. So allow your knees to roll and then turn your head away so we're getting a nice stretch along the whole of the spine. If you can, let the knees touch the floor. Last one 
of these the other side. So rolling the knees down to touch the floor and we're turning our head away to the other side. So looking away from your knees. Enjoy that stretch and then roll your knees back to the centre. Again, well done. Bring your arms down by your sides. So we're going to get moving our legs a little bit more from here. So come back to your start position with your feet and your knees slightly gapped. And we're going to scoop one leg up into tabletop nice and easy and then pop it back down again. And scoop the other leg up and then pop it back down. We're thinking the whole time about keeping the pelvis in the neutral position, so you're in neutral, the position that you found was comfortable at the start of this section. So we're just lifting and lowering the leg into tabletop and then back down. From here, we can attempt lifting one leg. Gently draw your belly button towards your spine. You don't want your tummy to pop forwards. And see if you can scoop the other leg up. First leg down and the second leg down. And again, we're going to lift lift and lower and lower. So we're just being quite careful about this movement. We're really focusing on control in the lower tummy. We don't want to lose that neutral pelvis and we don't want to let the tummy pop forward as we work through this little movement. So lift and lift and lower and lower. Lovely. Let's take a hamstring stretch from here. So we're going to work into the back of your leg. So if you lift up one leg and just support behind your thigh with your hand. All we're going to do here is straighten your leg up towards the ceiling. So we're going to aim to get this knee straight if you can. Another way to make it a bit more um, intense is stretch is to think about pressing your tailbone down and towards the floor to get a bit more stretch in the back part of your leg. And we'll just hold that for a moment. If you want to, you can circle your ankle gently. So maybe soften that knee. Switch to the other side, so you're lifting up your leg, supporting behind your thigh, and straighten your leg up towards the ceiling, aiming if you can to get this leg fairly straight, straight as you can go, and then to make it a bit more, um, to make it to let yourself feel it a bit more, just press your tailbone down slightly into the floor, so really stretch into the back of your thigh there, and if you wish, you can give your ankle a little circle. Let's release that leg back down again. Okay, so we're going to work these leg muscles a bit more into this next exercise here. So we're going to bring our leg up into tabletop and we're going to straighten it away. So imagine someone's pulling your toes and you're kind of aiming for the middle of the wall facing you. Fold your leg back to tabletop and then pop it down. And the other leg, we're going to lift and straighten and fold. Straighten, fold, and down. Keep going with this exercise here if you can. We're just going to do two more of these. Well done. Okay, let the legs rest for a moment. We're going to think about tummy muscles from here. So we very often like to do lots of sit-ups. This is a nice exercise to prepare us and get our bodies ready um, and working in the correct way to be able to perform sit-ups correctly. So we're going to think about the ribs here. And as we inhale, the ribs are going to lift. As we exhale, we want to try to pull the ribs down towards the front of your pelvis. So imagine you've got springs in the front of your tummy. So put your hands on your ribs, let them lift on the in-breath. And the out breath, gently draw the ribs down to the front of the pelvis. So we're engaging these big tummy muscles here, not the core ones, the big six pack muscles on top. We're going to take our hands behind our head to cradle the back of our head, back of our neck, and just have your elbows wide. You want to just be able to see your elbows in your peripheral vision. So we're going to inhale again from here, let the ribs lift. On the out breath, you use these muscles in your tummy to draw the ribs down towards the front of your pelvis, which will naturally lift up your head and shoulders. You want to be looking up at your knees, your eye gaze on your knees, with a slight chin lift, and then we're going to lower the head and shoulders back down again. So we're going to exhale to lift, and we're going to inhale to lower. And we're going to exhale to lift. Just 
to three more of these and exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. Exhale to lift. Inhale to lower. And the last one here. And hopefully you can feel the muscles in your tummy starting to connect as your ribs pull down. And then we're going to lower the head back down onto the floor. Take your arms over your head, lengthen your legs out. And just take a moment to stretch your body out. Don't worry here about where your pelvis is or where your ribs are. We're just letting the body lengthen quite naturally and just enjoy that stretch. Okay, from here we're going to fold up the knees, bring the arms back down, and let's roll over onto our side. So we're going to do a couple of exercises lying on our side for our hip muscles. So you can lie yourself on your side, that's quite helpful sometimes to put in a head support just to keep your neck in a nice comfortable position. In this position here, we're going to have the legs bent up in front of you. And if you look down your body, you should be able to see your thighs. You can check your lines up properly by lifting up your heels and making sure there's a straight line, heels, hips and shoulders. If you put your hands in your top hip and just pull it down, that'll create a little gap under your tummy, keeping your tummy and your spine nice and neutral so we can really just work on the hips and avoid straining into your back. So we'll start with your top hand on the floor. And all we're going to do here is press your heels together, which will let your top knee lift up into what we call a clam exercise. And you can see why it's called a clam, because it's like a clam opening and closing as you lift up that top knee. So all I'm doing here is pressing the heels together, which allows this top knee to lift up and then we're controlling it as it lowers back down again. So we're just going to continue to work in here for a few more lifts. Let's just take five more here. So I want you to feel this in the muscle at the top of your hip, two, and last one, and we're going to lower that top knee back down again. From here we're going to continue to work on these muscles in the hip, we're going to straighten your top leg down and just bring the underneath leg slightly back so it's bent and it's going to continue to support you underneath there. You keep your hands on the floor just now. With our top leg straight, you want your body to be like a pencil now, nice and straight. We're going to lift that top leg up just to above hip, hip height and then we're going to lower it back down again. So we're going to lift that top leg and we're going to lower it back down. So you're going to feel the muscles working in the outside part of your hip here. Let's take five more from here. Four and three and two and one. And let's bring that top leg onto the bottom leg and give it a little bit of a rest. Good work, everybody. We're going to set ourselves up from here so we can swap ends. In the middle of this transition, I think we'll just take a little stretch. So if you're able, we're going to push up to sit and if you can sit with your legs crossed, that's fine. If you prefer to put your legs out straight, that's fine to sit as you feel comfortable. We're going to pop one hand out to the side, the other one on top, and we're going to reach up and over the top. So we're stretching up the side of the body. And let's release that stretch again. Same on the other side. We're going to reach up and over. Let's take one of those, uh, one more of those to either side. So we're going to breathe out as we lengthen along the top side. Try and push your hip bone down here towards the mat and reach away with your fingers. And back down. Last one. Reaching up and over. Connecting through your hip towards the mat and reaching away with your fingers. And then release that stretch. Okay, take your time. We're going to move to the other end of the mat or um, of, of the rug if you're working in your house and come and lie yourself down the other way so that you're going to work on the other side. So we're starting again with the hip exercises with your head supports in. If you want to bend your elbow, you can if that's more comfortable. 
And again, the first one we're doing is our clam. So we've got our knees bent up in front of us, our heels, hips and shoulders are in a nice straight line. And if we take our hand to our top hip and slide it downwards, we'll get that nice gap, which again, just keeps our upper body in the correct position. And resting on the mat just now, press your heels together to lift and lower. So we're just working into this clam. Again, you really want to feel it in the top part of your hip here. You don't want to feel it in the outside part of your thigh. Keeping your upper body nice and relaxed. Okay, keep going here if you can. We're going to do five more in this position here. And four. And three. And two. And the last one. And then relax that top leg down. We're going to straighten it away. We've done this one before, so hopefully it should be fairly familiar. With the bottom leg slightly back, the top leg is going to lengthen away from you again. So you've got that nice little gap under your tummy. And again, we're lifting and lowering that top leg. So working into a slightly different part of the hip muscle. These hip muscle exercises are great for lots and lots of different things. People with knee pain and back pain, they're lovely muscles to exercise and make a little bit stronger. So we're just working into the top muscles of the hips. These exercises can be a bit achy while you're doing them, but what you'll find is that once you've stopped the pain, discomfort goes away straight away. Let's just take five more in this position here. And four, and three, and two. Feel the burn in your hip there, last one. And lower it back down again. Well done, we're gonna bring that top leg um, on top of the bottom one. And if you want to give it a little pat or a little rub, you can do. Well done. Okay, we're gonna push ourselves up to sit again from here. So pop your hands onto the floor and we're going to come up to sit. So take a moment just to kind of get your blood back up to your head again after lying on your side. And when you're ready, we're going to turn around so we're on our hands and knees. So at this point, if you do have knee pain, you might want to put a cushion underneath your knees to make it a bit more comfortable, or you could use your folded up towel that you've got from before. So we're into this nice hands and knees position here. And we're almost finished this section. We're going to do a couple of stretches for your spine just before we finish up for some relaxation. So we're going to do a little stretch called a cat cow stretch. So we're thinking about tucking underneath with your tailbone, chin to chest, and we're allowing our spine to curl upwards. So we're taking our belly button towards our spine and we're dropping the head down to arch your back. From here, lift up your head and lift up your tailbone as if you're taking your back into a U shape. We're dropping the belly button down towards the floor. And once again, just tuck your body, almost like you're tucking into a ball again, chin to chest, tailbone underneath. And then let yourself come back to that straight back position. Let's think about stretching into the middle part of the back from here. So put the back of one hand on the floor under your breastbone. And we're gonna slide, so if you're kind of peeking underneath your arm, you're sliding the arm along the floor, Bend your arm at the front to let your weight settle down into the back of that shoulder. So we're looking round and underneath your arm. This one's called thread the needle, so it's like you're threading a needle with your arm. And bring this arm back. We're going to the same on the other side, back of your hands onto the floor, and then reach along and under. We're going to hold that for a moment or two. Our final stretch, we're going to draw up our bottom back onto our heels, stretch our arms forwards. And if you want to for this one, you can gap your knees slightly. And just take a few breaths into that position there. Good. Bring your weight back up onto your heels. And sit yourself back up. Well done, that's been a really good class. Um, 
what we're going to do next is some relaxation. So get yourselves comfortable for the relaxation session. Well done. Now it is time for some relaxation. You will see photos on the screen that may help with your relaxation. However, please find a comfortable position. It may be sitting, or it may be lying down. But please get yourself into that comfortable position so your body is able to relax. Close your eyes and allow yourself to focus on this present moment and time, allowing all thoughts to be put on hold. As you begin, bring your mind to think about where you are now. The space you are in. Notice the support your body has from the earth. Notice the feeling of the air on your skin. Any sounds around you. Let your attention move to sensations inside your body and take your awareness of your breathing. Follow your breath, noticing the sensations of breathing in and breathing out. If you have any thoughts, let them pass you by. your breathing out, bring relaxation and heaviness to your body. Now focus on your toes and feet, curl them up and really tense all the muscles in your feet. Now release them and let them relax and loosen. Tense your calf muscles. Tighten and focus on that tension. Now let go and relax. Tense your buttocks and squeeze really tight. Now release. Breathe slowly, letting go of all that tension. Tense your abdominal muscles and your lower back. Pull in tightly and then let go. Think about your breathing. Tighten your arm muscles and curl your hands into a fist. Squeeze really tightly and then let your hands fall open on the ground or your legs. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and tense your upper back. Now release. Rock your shoulders up towards your neck and tighten your neck muscles. And now relax all these muscles. Squeeze your face into a knot, bunching up your nose and mouth, pushing your tongue to the top of your mouth and clenching your jaw. Frown as hard as you can, closing your eyes tightly. Now release and let your whole body relax as you breathe out all that tension. 
feel a wave of relaxation through your body from head to toe and back again. Let your body become heavy and relaxed, feeling warm, calm and comfortable. Let the waves of relaxation wash over you. Now, Imagine yourself walking along a path or somewhere special that feels safe for you. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere in the natural world. Perhaps a beach, a mountain top or a meadow. It could be somewhere you have been before or somewhere in your imagination. Let's go there in your mind and imagine you are there right now. It could be a beautiful sunny morning. You can hear the birds singing and feel the freshness of the morning air on your cheeks. Every step you take, you feel fresher and more alert. You are feeling more revitalized this morning. You feel so full of energy. Every muscle in your body is carrying you forward effortlessly. Your body is fit and your mind is clear of thoughts as you watch the beautiful scenes around you unfold. You are filled with a pleasant sensation of anticipation as you approach your goal. As you look around, you may notice the flowers around you, the sky, the green of the grass, the smell in the air, and you may feel the light breeze on your face. What sounds do you hear? Birds twittering, the waves lapping, the wind in the trees, or the babbling brook. Make yourself comfortable and feel the earth holding you as you settle back and continue to relax. You feel warm, safe and at peace. The beauty of the surroundings fills your view. You breathe deeply and take it all in. This is your safe place that you can go to whenever you wish to. It is always there and will always welcome you. Relax and enjoy being there. slowly allow yourself to bring your awareness back to where you are, the place you are in. Bring yourself back to the present moment, getting ready to continue with your day. Now, when you feel ready, take a few deep breaths and start to wiggle your fingers and toes. And slowly open your eyes.
this concludes this exercise video. We hope you have enjoyed it. Please feel free to complete this a few times a week. There are other videos that are either more challenging or easier to, so choose which one works for you. See you next time. Thank you.